Welcome back for another video. Today I'm in my 565 Haynes Hunter. I cleared a spot in our shed and brought it home just before Christmas. I haven't been able to do much work on it. It's been pretty well raining since Christmas. Don't think I'll be diving the case for a while. I had a couple of clear days there where I was able to get some of the foaming done. While it's been raining, I've just been working through, cutting out all these floor sections. I've pretty well got most of them cut out now. I just need a few more sheets of thermalite to finish it off. Back in February 2020, I thought it would be a good idea to take on this project. Having never done anything like this myself, I needed a lot of guidance from a close friend. This year, it's gone from a complete hull to a skeleton to a bare hull. And after a lot of grinding, sanding and itching, I got it to a stage where we could start rebuilding. Back in June last year, the transom went in. And from there, we've just basically just been working through, putting stringers in, glassing over and getting it to where it is now. Anyway, that's enough about the boat. Let's talk about the diving. 2020 was a really good year of diving for me. I logged about 40 dives through the year. I went to the reef about six times off Mackay and three or four days up at Lizard Island there. The other 30 odd dives were either island dives or coastal and headland diving. I've dived some really clean water. I've dived some not so clean water. I've had some new PBs. I took out overall champion of our local spearfishing comp and I had heaps of fun along the way. So let's start back in January. This is my very first dive of this year. Nothing too spectacular happened. I just wanted to showcase the first dive of the year and see how my year progressed from there. This is a pretty ordinary day for visibility, but there was still enough to see in spearfish. On this day, I was out to try and pick up a grey mackerel for the smoker. I love hunting grey mackerel like this, diving down and either sitting on the bottom and waiting, or just slowly crawling along the bottom. This dive I slowly crawled along the bottom. You can see a legal sized black spot tusk fish milling around in front of me. I spot the grey mackerel. I hesitate to take a shot as I wanted to get a good look at the fish to make sure it's legal length. Sometimes in the dirtier water, the perception of size can be thrown off. I managed to get a good holding shot. Greys are very soft flesh and skin. I think the reel helps me out here as I have the drag fairly loose, which allows the fish to run without having the drag of a float or float rope set up. In February, we headed out to the reef. Hey guys. It was a pretty standard reef trip for us. We landed a few trout, tuskies and red throat. I'm diving down on the good size eating tusky here. This one was a pretty easy hunt. The fish turned and presented itself with an easy shot. The second fish was moving around a bit more erratically. I didn't want to spook it by aiming directly at the fish or staring at it. So I aimed away from the fish until it presented itself with a good shot. Which brings us back to the Mackay case and my biggest tusky of the year back in April. I'd seen the fish on an earlier dive. There was quite a bit of current in this particular spot. I dived down and was slowly making my way down the rocks towards the sand when this nice sized tusky came moving through. I stayed nice and calm and rather than move the gun to the fish and possibly spook it, I let it swim in front of the gun. This fish went about 8 kilos neat and is a great example of what we have on offer on the coast here in Mackay. Yeah. I had landed a few barra already through the year. In May I landed my biggest at 99 centimetres. Also in May, I lost what I think may have been my biggest bar of the year. I spotted a school and saw them move from right to left.
I kept slowly crawling along the bottom in the hopes that they'd pulled up not too far away when I noticed a couple of fish had stayed behind. I got a good shot on this fish. As I was pulling the fish in, I noticed the fish started swimming a bit differently. It was as if I'd strung the fish on a shooting line. Just as I was about to slide my hands into its gills, it gave one last kick and freed itself and I realised all I had left was about 6 inches of the end of my spear. I got a few more barra in June. I'd seen this fish a few times. The first few times I spotted it, it had heading behind the rocks and I couldn't get a shot on it. This time, it was a bit too slow. Which brings us to August, and some of the best visibility I've ever dove in on the coast. When it's 8 metres deep in the mouth of our river and you can see the bottom, you know the visibility is going to be crazy out the front. With the water so clean, I thought it would be a good opportunity to dive some new marks that are normally pretty dirty. first dive on a new mark. I slowly dived down and checked out somewhere to lay on the bottom. I ended up on top of this bommy. As I hit the bottom I spotted a trout. It moved to my right and as it was moving I saw a second trout move and sit just in front of the first trout. I adjusted my aim slightly to try and get both fish with one shot. It worked. That double header of trout gave me my bag limit, so I headed to a nearby island to hang on a pressure point and see what came through. I wasn't there for long when this tusky swam underneath me. I think I saw it before it saw me. I slowly swam down, lined up for a shot. Curiosity got the better of him and he turned to look at me. This wasn't going to be any ordinary dive. I felt like I was being watched. This time of the year, you can hear whales singing just about every time you dive. I've been hearing whale songs all day and you sort of get used to it. I process the fish as I normally would. Just as I put the fish on the stringer, something caught my eye. It felt like the bommie below me started moving. It took me a second to realise what was going on. I wasn't sure if my GoPro was still on or not, so I hit the button and accidentally turned it off. I quickly turned it back on and dove down to follow the whale. No more than five minutes later, this manta ray swam through on nearly the exact same path the whale came through at. This day was the start of a few really good months of diving for me. On the 1st of October, I was out at an island very close to home. I found a small school of fusilier. I sat over top of them and prepared myself for a dive. As I dove down, this Spanish caught my eye. In my head, I immediately thought it's about a 16 kilo fish. I line up and took my shot. I stained the fish with the backbone shot. But it turns out the fish was a bit further away than what I thought and about seven kilos heavier than what I thought. My spear didn't penetrate the fish. The Spanish was doing little twitches, but the twitches were enough for me to lose sight of it. I did three more dives around the area, 
I jumped up in the boat and had a look around to see if maybe it made its way to the surface. I jumped back in the water and did another dive to scan the area and it was this dive when I found it. The fish went 23 and a half kilos or just over 50 pounds. In October, our annual local spearfishing comp was held. We headed out to the hard line where we were diving just off the weather face of this reef and I noticed a large eagle ray swim through underneath a ledge. I didn't notice the ledge until the ray came past. I prepared for the dive. I could see another little cave just to the left. I planned to dive down, check out the cave on the left and then go have a look underneath the ledge on the right. I checked out the cave on the left as I was still descending and I could see there wasn't anything there. I then checked underneath the ledge. I could hardly believe my eyes. A big mangrove jack was sitting just under the ledge. I slowly made my way over to it. I turned my gun slightly to make sure my shark clip and stringer didn't hit the reef and make a noise and scare the fish. It turned slightly to head out the back of the ledge and I managed to stone the fish. This fish helped me seal the deal and take out overall champion of our local spearing comp. The next big trip was our Lizard Island trip. Lizard Island is northeast of Cooktown and has some amazing places to dive. My last video was all about this trip, so I'll link it here in the description and it should pop up at the end of the video as well. Two weeks later, I was back up north at Lake Eachin doing a dive course with these legends, Lex and Az. If anybody up this way is keen on a course, message these guys directly or message me and I'll put you in contact with them. I learnt a lot and Lex worked with me and helped me to new depths. Thanks for watching my bit of a recap of 2020. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe. If you have any tips or anything you want to see in my videos, please leave a comment below. I'll leave you with this little bit of a teaser. This is my very first dive of 2021 from last week. We had a couple of days of good weather before this low pressure system moved through. Happy New Year and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> Maybe close to 10. Yeah. It's the biggest one I've shot. <laughs>